Okay, today we're going to go over the system controls inside the administration menu under system file. There's several different things here. Most of, or not most of it, the left hand side of the screen we won't generally be changing once we go in here. And once this is set up, it's generally a set unless there's a new feature that becomes available. We don't go back in this menu very often. Um, data path, your server, country, default group or part group code, this is on the outside purchase stuff. If you didn't select a specific code, it goes to this. Uh, there are GL accounts for the different things here. Again, this is generally set up when you set up your, your DST Navic system. A couple of the options we have at the top right here, use petty cash menu. If you're using petty cash, you can't use AP vouchers. Uh, a lot of people will use the AP vouchers so that way everything is tracked with the outside purchases and you can track all the invoices and that's what it's called is the outside uh, accounts payable voucher. Use order number as invoice number. Uh, this will make it so that the way it's one number for both, a little bit easier for, for tracking or searching for invoices inside a DST once it's invoiced out. Otherwise, you have invoice number one and, I'm sorry, order number one, invoice number whatever it may be, they're, they're just completely different. If you use the order number as the invoice number, then the difference is one, two, three, four is your order number. One, two, three, four, dash one, two, three, four is the invoice number. So it's the six digit store number dash, and then whatever the order number is becomes that invoice number. Um, require OP detail. So outside purchase parts, uh, when you click on that screen, they have to put in the details, the, the line code slash brand, the description, and then uh, also the, the cost in there as well. Store side PO, uh, this is only available for the home office users. Um, so if you have it set to store side, then any user in the store side with the security clearance can go into the create purchase order screen and suggest and confirm and submit for delivery your big O tire orders or your big O non tire orders or NAPA DC direct orders. There's a couple other vendors we can get set up to also do electronic ordering through the POS as well. If that's unchecked, it's done in home office. Now, this setting should not be changed. Once it's set up, it will create more problems than it's worth. So if you start store side, leave it store side, unless you get a lot of help from Solera to change it over, there may be a charge for that, I don't know. Uh, but if you're, if you're planning on, on doing it, uh, and manage it from home office, having somebody sign on to it, then start home office side. And it, it's, at it, any rate, it, just stay with whatever you choose in the beginning. Uh, confirm tire package. So when you select a tire within the POS screen, on the lower right hand corner, there's a quantity field and a tire package field. By Default, it's whatever the default packages in the system or the store settings, and we'll go over that in another video. But once you click OK on that screen, another screen comes up where you're confirming that's what you want quantity wise, retail price wise. It'll show you what else is in that package. At this point, you can either change that or leave it the way it is and go to the next screen. So it's just a confirmation window. I, I, we use it in our group. I, I like using it that way, uh, just a, a confirmation to say, here's what you're going with. Use advanced revisions. Now, this was designed for California. Some state, other states may use it, I don't know. Um, but use advanced revisions. So when you're changing a price or a part, it documents that it saves that change within DST. When you go to invoice it or save it, it's going to pop up another window that says what are the changes, how were they approved, uh, who are they approved by, telephone number, email address, whatever it may be. Not a bad idea to use it. Um, it does print out a advanced revisions page at the end when you invoice out the customer, so you can go over that and actually have it signed. Um, unless you're required to use it, you don't have to, but uh, California does use it default catalog costs. So when you're writing up a work order, you go into the catalog and select a part, whatever's in the catalog for cost is what it's going to go to by default. So unless you click check uh, a primary vendor check one or primary vendor check all, whatever's in that catalog from the last time the MCL was updated is what you're going to use. Um, it is going to use in that work order. And that's the default catalog cost. And then 
RO login first time only. This option, when you log into POS, go to a repair order, you log it, and it only logs the very first time who entered that repair order. Everything else is just a free for all as far as you don't have to sign in. If, if I start it and John Smith goes into it, adds it to it, that goes into my name. So if you're paying any type of spiff or trying to track any types of sales, for each salesman, I would recommend not using that. So now, if it's just you and there's no spiffs or anything like that, you don't care, or the salespeople are not tracking what they what exactly they sell, uh, you can check that and it's just one last time you have to use your credentials to get into a field. You don't have to do it with less the first time. Use AP Voucher Screen went over. Use Split Commission Screen. Now, Use Split Commission Screen is in POS under the other options tab, I believe, and you click it, it opens up a screen where you can check different items within the repair order to say this mechanic, this GS, this uh, service writer did these certain tasks within the repair order. That way it can be split, hence the name, among different people. Blind physical, I actually like blind physical. Um, Excuse me. Blind physical, when this is checked, will, while doing a physical inventory, not input the current inventory quantity on hand. So whoever's performing the inventory is, is required to basically count the tires for every part number it shows, rather than saying, oh, it, we, we show four of these in the system. I see three, oh, maybe that's one, two, there's no label. There's a couple of reasons why you'd use blind physical. It might take a little bit longer to count the tires, but again, I prefer it because it makes it so that way you can't see what the computer says you currently have on hand. You can only see what part numbers you should be stocking. Enforce email. Enforce email when selected will, when you open a repair order, if there's no email on file, it will pop up a window saying what is the email. The only caveat is if I put in no at no.com, albeit it's not a valid email, it will no longer ask for that email. So just have to make sure that we keep, you know, people honest and put the correct email addresses in those fields. Subestimate carry salesman to RO. This is a great feature. This will, if I write up the ticket, and the customer declines repairs, so I save it to the sub-estimate, or I created a sub-estimate and saved it as the sub-estimate. I invoice out the customer. The customer returns a week, two, three later and wants to do the same repairs. When I pull up that sub-estimate and add those repairs to the repair order, it will pull over my name as by default, so we know who quoted that for those repairs. Use package totals. This is also another sub estimate item here. It gives you a total on the top right hand side of the package that was created. So if you've broken an oil change package, brake fluid exchange package, transmission oil service package, brake package, it, it separates out the different items within that sub estimate. Enable hide package totals. I like this feature because when you're in the sub estimate and you have, let's say, those packages, four or five of them, there's a little minus button and you click that and it shrinks it to just the title of the package with the total, not just the individual parts and not showing all the individual parts and labor of each of the packages. It's kind of nice if you have a long estimate within the sub estimate. Enforce DOT OP tires. Now, it is what it says it is. This, when you do an outside purchase tire, it's OP tire, OP, BFG, whatever the, the OP outside purchase part number you're using. When you go to invoice it out, there's that marker on the right hand side of the, of the work order screen that shows where you put in your, your DOT. Update central inventory live. I would always have this checked so when I sell a set of four tires and I invoice it out, it updates home office saying those tires were sold and if I have another location for example, that's five miles down the street that we both, uh, that are both in this home office, then they'll pull up that part number. It will show that those tires are no longer available instead of 
you know, having a mix-up or something along those lines or somebody else trying to sell those tires. Cost of goods method and balance sheet method. These are warranty tires, which should be warranty products altogether. Um, you'd have to talk to an accountant. I, I, I go with the two different options you have for these, but it's just a radial. You, you can change it. Oil change defaults. Show all oil classes in oil picker. Now, when we go over to the inventory and parts screen at one point in one of these videos, we'll go over the oils and we'll be able to see where you set your oil classes for the oil picker. Or you could just leave it so that way with this check that no matter what the class is, it shows up in the oil picker so they could select 5W20 regular or 5W20 synthetic blend or 5W20 full synthetic. Just keep in mind it's a full list of all the oils, but there is a search box to put in 5W20 and see your options for that oil. Use oil package lookup feature. This will give you the uh, different data points from Activant in the gray box in your in your oil uh, oil change package screen. So when you get to that oil picker, it'll give, it should give you depending on what uh, Activant has, it should give you your oil capacity as well as your oil type um, and a couple other details that are pertinent to doing oil change if they're available. Private label credit card pay type. So this right here, whatever you use for your pay type for your private label credit card, you will select it here and it will run, and this is only done one time, it, it'll run for the past, I believe it's 18 months, if that pay type's been used for the our private label credit card for Big O Tires, and it will put a marker inside the RO. So when you open up the RO, there'll be a note there that will say uh, credit card holder, private label credit card holder. That way you know that they've already they already have our card and you wouldn't need to ask them but you could ask them if they wanted to put it on their big o tires credit card and receive that six months no interest financing or the one year or the rebate or whatever program is going on at that point in time and that's it